Okay, so you've decided to buy a resale HDB flat. Where do you start? Hey guys, it's Merrick and welcome to another new video. Sorry it took a while to publish this video because I just recovered from COVID. Today we'll be going through the step-by-step -step process of purchasing a resale HDB flat. So let's jump right into it. First things first, not everyone can buy a HDB flat in Singapore. It's public housing, so it's a given that there are some conditions you need to fulfill. Firstly, to be eligible to buy a resale HDB flat, you need to fall under one of these schemes if you're buying as a Singaporean family nucleus or under these schemes if you want to buy as a single Singaporean citizen. So for step two, decide whether you want to engage a property agent. Of course, there are pros and there are cons. The HDB process isn't as easy or smooth sailing as a lot of people would like to think. So maybe you can decide after watching this video whether or not you would like to engage an agent. So this is briefly some of the pros and some of the cons. So essentially, if you manage to engage a competent agent, you won't have to worry about the following steps in the video because the agent will be able to guide you along and help you plan the process of buying the house. So before you go around shopping for a house, you need to know what your budget is. To get a budget, you need to know how much uh, is the maximum loan you can afford. So what you can do is use the formula here or use a mortgage or financial calculator. So first find out how much you can pay monthly by using the mortgage servicing ratio of 30%. So for example, if you're earning an income of $6,000, you can service a maximum mortgage of $1,800 a month at an interest rate of 2.6% assuming you're taking a HDB loan. On a 25-year loan tenor, you can afford a maximum HDB loan of around $396,000. So adding 15% down payment on top of that, your maximum budget should be about $465,000. So this is the most expensive flat that you can buy, but most of the time we won't suggest that you max out that $465,000. Also, if you are taking a HDB loan, this is where you would apply uh, for home loan eligibility letter from HDB. So the next step is to register your intent to buy. This is an important step and most buyers wouldn't know this unless they have done their prior research. You need to register your intent to buy on the HDB resale portal before you can actually uh, make offers and receive options to purchase. So this intent to buy is valid for 12 months. Um, so if you don't manage to find a house within the 12 months, you need to re-register with HDB. So the next step is most probably your favourite, it is to shop for houses. So yeah, all you need to do is to browse the property portals or uh, some people are even using carousel now to sell their houses. One important thing to take note here is that you have to check whether you meet the ethnic integration policy and uh, the Singaporean PR quota for the block. So if you and the seller are of the same race and nationality, then it obviously won't be a problem. So once you found a house that you're interested in, you can make an offer to the listing agent and you negotiate from there. Now this is where the tricky part comes. Price isn't the only thing you can negotiate when it comes to a resale flat purchase. Other things like when to submit the resale application and uh, whether or not there's an extension of stay can come into play too. So basically managing the timeline and managing the price is what this negotiation phase is for. So if you don't have an agent representing you, there's a chance that the seller agent might take advantage of your lack of knowledge to offer you an unfavorable deal. Sometimes these things are noticeable until you exercise the option and it's a bit too late. So once you and the seller agent have come to an agreed price, uh, they will issue you an option to purchase in exchange of an option fee uh, which is typically $1,000 for a resale HDB. You then have 21 days to decide whether or not you really want to go through with the purchase. 
But this is also when you'd engage a private law firm if you don't plan on using HDB lawyers. So after receiving your option to purchase, you need to submit a request for valuation from HDB. So uh, this will let you know whether or not there's any cash over valuation involved. Meaning if the selling price of the flat is 700,000, uh, but the valuation came out to be only $680,000, you need to fork out the extra $20,000 in cash. There is a processing fee for the valuation and it's $120. On top of that, if you are taking a bank loan, this is when you get your uh, letter of offer from the bank. So if you're okay with the valuation and you have your loan sorted out already, uh, you want to proceed with the purchase. You can go ahead and exercise the option by paying an exercising fee of typically $4,000. The initial $1,000 of option fee and the $4,000 here uh, will be part of your down payment for the home. So within two weeks of exercising your option, you need to pay your buyer's stamp duty. So most of the time, you won't have to do this yourself because it will be handled either by your law firm or HDB's lawyers. So at this point, you and the seller agent will have come to a consensus on when to submit the resale application. So both parties have to submit the application within seven days of each other. Otherwise, the application will be void. So after you've submitted the resale application to HDB, you have to wait an SMS from them telling you when you'll be able to go down to endorse your documents and the completion date will be sent to you, which is typically around 8 weeks from when you receive the SMS. So HDB will review your application and prepare the relevant documents for you to endorse. Uh, once they are ready, you receive an SMS from HDB like I said earlier. You need to pay resale fees like the HDB caveat and conveyancing fees. All these can be done via the resale portal. You also need to purchase the mandatory HDB fire insurance policy if you're taking a housing loan from HDB. So last and final step is of course to attend your resale completion appointment. So if there's no extension, this is when you'd also collect your keys from them. So there you have it. Those are the 13 steps you need to know if you are looking to buy a resale HDB flat. The steps are rather complicated and in my opinion, I would say it's worth it if you can find a competent agent to represent you when purchasing a flat. So thank you for watching this video. Hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, you can of course uh, leave them in the comment section down below or you can DM me. My contact number is in the description box. Bye.